All right, everyone, it's been a long time. I uh, ran into a dead end uh, with my Don Smith devices, and now I've come across something else I'm very excited about. Um, it is a theory, a new um, physical theory called quantized inertia. Uh, it's a theory that gets rid of dark matter, uh, the gravitational constant, and it's ex uh, it is capable of explaining uh, very accurately uh, anomalous behavior in galaxy rotations. And uh, one of the cool things it predicts is uh, electric rockets and uh, propulsion using uh, the uh, quantum field. Uh, and that is um, something I'm very interested in. And the cool thing is that all my previous projects were always um, based off of you know, obscure forum posts, uh, inventors that are no longer alive, uh, YouTube videos with people who claim all kinds of things that are not really true often and not very clear. And the cool thing here is, is that this is a brand new theory, but it's already been proven in four labs around the world. It's received 1.3 million in funding from DARPA. Uh, the Defense Advanced Research uh, uh, Projects uh, in the United States. So this is much more legit. Also, uh, a satellite containing uh, a, a test uh, thruster based off of, on this theory had already been launched on a SpaceX rocket. Unfortunately, the satellite malfunctioned, so hopefully we'll get a redo of that soon. But uh, so this is much more legit, and I just want to quickly introduce you to uh, what I'm going to be working with. So here we have um, a paper from the um, yeah the inventor of this theory, uh, Mike McCullough. And um, yeah, so in this paper he uh, explains some of the math, which is rather simple in the end, to determine the amount of thrust you can get, in this case out of a simple um, plate capacitor, parallel plate capacitor. And I just want to show you very briefly based on this um, this is like uh, some of the observed thrust uh, versus the predictions and here you see that uh, it's hard to read in this sense but uh, this came down to a 13 micron distance uh, between the plates resulted in in this case about six millinewtons of thrust and the way that is um, measured is with a precision scale. I have this one. It might not suffice. I might need a more precise one, but this one's already uh, rather precise, um, up to like two numbers behind the comma. So it's. Uh, I'm gonna try it with that one. This is a high voltage variable power supply. It goes from about 500 volts to 10 kilovolts. Uh, I have a kilovolt meter. I have 15 microns of polyamide uh, Kapton uh, insulation material and I'm going to be using uh, aluminium tape as the plates. Uh, so uh, the, actually the authors of this article who were the ones, the first ones to put this theory into um, experiment, uh, they uh, used a similar setup. They used about 5,000 volts and they used uh, 25 by 25 millimeter uh, aluminium capacitors with a 13 micron, I have 15 micron, so it's pretty close, um, dielectric. So hopefully I can, uh, my first goal is to replicate their results and then hopefully improve upon it. Uh, in their paper, there's also some, like you see here, it's literally just two plates, with the dielectric, and some insulation material around it, and some high voltage coming in. Pretty simple stuff. So I'm going to be uh, replicating uh, this stuff, and they use a very simple circuit, just a filter, a high voltage power supply, filter capacitor, some current limiting resistors, and two diodes. And this is their, uh, they're actually the capacitor that they were testing. So uh, yeah, definitely check out these two papers. I will link all of this in the description. And just to explain very, very br briefly the theory, uh, you can see it here, maybe you can pause the video and read the description, but 
in an, in essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to launch an electron or multiple electrons from one plate of the capacitor to the other. So in free space, if an electron or any particle <laughs> moves in one direction, in this case this way, uh, due to the limits of the speed of light, certain information uh, from the back of the particle isn't able to catch up with it. So information is lost here, and here there's more information, and which causes it to experience a force from the front that's larger than from the back, which gives it inertia. And that's the theory here. So that's the explanation of inertia by this theory. And in this case, between the capacitor plates, uh, it's reversed. So you, it sees less uh, what, uh, like the force it sees is called unruh radiation. Uh, you can look that up if you want. Uh, it sees less of it, so it uh, moves very fast to this side and it, the, due to the law of conservation of momentum, the capacitor will want to move uh, along with it. And so that's where the thrust comes from in the capacitor. It seems a bit vague, but I'll hopefully be able to go more in depth later. But essentially, I'm going to be making a capacitor with a very thin dielectric, place high voltage on it while it's on a very precision scale. And that will hopefully show us that it will either become lighter or heavier depending on the orientation, showing us that thrust is being generated. And um, the papers that have already been written on this uh, show that stacking of capacitors in series will improve the thrust. And yeah, we could possibly, uh, Mike McCullough, the inventor of the theory, he um, he says that one of the cool things is that we might be able to build a spacecraft that will reach Proxima Centauri um, in our lifetimes. And that's something that makes me very excited. And the fact that this is uh, published in peer-reviewed papers, has received serious funding. It's been, um, this capacitor thrust has been proven in four labs around the world. It gives me hope that this is a more legit pursuit than um, the Don Smith situation was. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, are excited to see what's going to happen and uh, I'll keep you, uh, keep you updated. And uh, definitely check the uh, links in the description for more information.